Just a reminder that everything you see here on Gamers on Games is made possible by patrons like you. Why not check out our Patreon page? It would really help us out. Gamers on Games is sponsored in part by... I'm Lynn from Metalhead Minis. Great to meet you. Uh, be sure to check us out online at metalheadminis.com. You can find out more about our services, such as miniature painting. We also do consignment. We also teach at local game stores. Be sure to check us out at metalheadminis.com. Thanks for having me. Hi, this is Dennis with 3D Game Gear. We are gamers with a family-run business that specialize in 3D printed accessories for board games. We offer a wide range of items, including tokens, token cups, token boxes, player dashboards, and much more. We are always adding new items to enhance your gaming experience, so come check us out at the address below. And by viewers like you. Games. So, um, what do you want to show us today? Sure. So, uh, right now we're working on a game called Aeons, and what we do is we take uh, successful tabletop games and we turn them into video games. You can play on Steam, on your tablets, etc. So, this is Aeons, and this is the demo. Yeah, it's on Kickstarter right now. It goes on Tuesday. Um, we're actually probably going to fully fund today. It's looking like we're very excited. It's been moving along. Uh, and what Aeons then is is a digital deck building game. Your goal is to use your mages to defend the city of Greyfall from the nameless nemesis that comes through the breaches. The breaches here is how you power your magic, and you've got your spells and gems in your hand that are used to buy new cards and build your deck, and then hopefully power your, your mages up so that you can defeat the nameless. So spells can be prepped to open breaches, to drag them, and then on your next turn is when you can actually cast them. And you use uh, these gems to build up the currency in the game, which is called Ether. You can see I've got four Ether here, and that's what allows me to buy cards from the supply. So in this case, I'm going to buy a diamond cluster that is immediately discarded. And this is where we get the first cool innovation of Anzen, where you do not shuffle your discard pile. In order that your cards get discarded, it stays. When it's time to get a new deck, you just flip it over, and then you draw again. It's a normal deck build. Different version, yeah, different from normal deck build. The second cool innovation of Aeon's is the fact that the shuffling actually occurs in the turn order. So in this case, we've got two mages and a, and a nemesis. Uh, and so there's six things. You've got two, in each round, each mage is going to go twice and the nemesis is going to go twice. But the order is completely random. So if you can see, that first mage is going to go twice in a row. So she's going to use her spell, drag it up here and hit the ne uh, nemesis, deal one damage and gain one ether from that spell. Then we're going to place some cards here to get some more uh, ether. Now you'll notice that we've got these four breaches and the ability to either open or focus them. You can only prep a spell to an open or a focused breach. And obviously the goal is to get them all four open so that you can then have lots of spells when you turn. What we're going to do is that I'm actually going to focus this breach for because it's the closest one to being open. I'm going to prep a spark to that and I'm going to prep a spark to my uh, second open one here. Uh, when you prep to a focused breach, you have to play that next turn. Uh, if it's an open breach, you can leave it. Uh, you can just leave it trapped and use it at your list. Now, one of the reasons why you might want to do that is because being a deck building game, sometimes you don't want to have these cards in your deck as you're cycling through your deck. So it sort of puts them on pause so you're not going to draw them and you'll take a spot in your, in your hand while you're playing. So we'll end the turn. Draw up to five. And then we'll see who's going to go next. So now the Nemesis is going to go. The Nemesis plays in the Agony Field. Now, the way that it works here with... Um, the Nemesis, oh, and the Nemesis went twice in a row, that's always a danger. In fact, sometimes you can actually have the Nemesis go four times in a row, and the last two in one round, and the first two in the next round. So it can, be it can be very, very dangerous. So, uh, this is a power here, right? So, the Nemesis has this two discard. If, uh, if the heroes choose, if the mages choose to destroy a card in hand that costs two or more ether, we can get rid of that card, and then we don't have to worry about it on the uh, and then we've got another power here, which does not have this bleed status. So this is going to go off no matter what in three turns. So if we turn to two, three rounds. Actually, no. Three turns is correct. Three nemesis turns. So, you know, again, if they play, if it goes two in a row, right. they might, might, might end up that much time to try to destroy it. Let's exactly. So this is Gian. Gian starts with two open. So I'm going to prep two spells. I'm going to play 
one in my ether. Now this is interesting because this card has one ether, but then one extra ether, but it can only be spent on um, a gem. So I've got four ether, but only if I buy a gem with it. So I'm going to buy a, a diamond cluster here. The only about diamond clusters is if you play multiple of them in a round, they sort of build on themselves. You get more and more and more ether. Uh, but for now, we now know the GM is going to go next because it's the only ether in the flat.